Over the next few days, Chowell will be interviewing various parliamentary candidates from around Oxford. I'll be speaking to the candidates for Oxford West and Avenue. Today is the Lib Dem candidate. Ben Moran, thanks for talking to me. Hi, thanks for having me. So, someone predicted that your party will lose as many as 30 seats in the upcoming election. Is it a difficult time to be a Lib Dem? Um, it, the last five years have certainly been a challenge, let's put it that way. Um, we took a very, very difficult decision going into government. We knew that it wouldn't necessarily be the best thing for us electorally, but we knew it was the right thing to do for the economy. And now that the economy is finally finding its feet, albeit there's a way to go, we are very proud of the decision we took. Of course, last election it was a key margin, with only 0.3% uh, margin. That's correct. But the polls have widened the gap somewhat in the last That couple of always years. happens with Liberal Democrats. So what happens is, in constituencies like this that are broadly centre-left, uh, what you have is a splitting of the left vote. Come the day, what we need to do to beat the Conservative here is to bring that left vote together and, and, and vote together. So that's what we're seeking to do. And that's always been the case in Oxford West and Abingdon. There have always been large numbers of Labour and Green voters who lent their vote to, at the time it was Dr Evan Harris, um, overall, this will always be a conservative Lib Dem marginal. If you look at Kidlington and Abingdon and the villages, there simply is not enough support for any of the other parties to gain uh, the seat back. So if we want a more centre-left uh, MP for this area, which I think is broadly speaking what the electorate is telling me on the doorstep, then we need to get a coalition of the left together and we can beat the Conservative here. All the polls, when asked the question, how would you vote here, show that that is the case. I mean, you should probably get onto the elephant in the room if you're talking about sure. students and liberal democrats, uh, which is the pledge on tuition. Yeah. Recently, I the NUS has published this huge billboard campaign, liar, liar, against the Lib Dems. Yeah. Does that hurt to see students I find, so against Lib Dems? Um, I think that's firstly not entirely true. I mean, I think there, that we need to bear in mind that there are lots of different things that students care about. Uh, I care a lot about tuition fees. Um, on the NUS uh, billboards, I have to say, first of all, it's a bit disingenuous for them to point out just the Lib Dems not being able to fulfil promises. Labour, uh, on three separate occasions, said they wouldn't raise tuition fees and did. So Labor I think that's very important. The most it, sure, it's the most recent, but okay, let's put it into perspective. And secondly, there were two parts to that pledge. The first one was not to raise tuition fees. I signed that. As the MP for this area, I would not have voted for the rise. That I've been very clear about. If I sign a pledge like that, I will stick to it. But in the context of the coalition, that. no, I would always have done. And in fact, if you look at Julian Huppert, Jenny Willett, big university town MPs for the Liberal Democrats did the same thing. But we did not win the election. That's really important to remember. Yeah. I wish we had. And we had a costed plan to bear down tuition fees over six years. But we couldn't put it into practice because we were in coalition. Meanwhile, the Tories wanted unlimited upfront fees that were not progressive. The second part of that NUS pledge, by the way, was about a more progressive and fair system. We did deliver that. And as a result, there are more disadvantaged students from backgrounds uh, like that who are coming to university now. Because they've realised, actually, they don't have to start paying anything back until they're earning 21000 so there has been some positive side to this, the progressive system. Over time, I would like, as a personal feeling, to see uh, no fees. But oh, that, in a time of austerity, is highly unlikely. So what we've said is we would like a review. We need to make sure that everyone who wants to go to university goes. And I would say this, if there is extra money in the system, what we know is that students can't afford to go. They can't afford to pay their rent. They can't afford to eat. The reducing of fees by Labour is a bit of a gimmick. It only really helps middle class students, which is fair enough. But a lot of students don't go because they can't afford anything you know, in the upfront bit. So we would much rather see grants for those who are really, really poor who can't get to university because they can't even pay their rent. And that's where I would like to see the money go if there's any extra. One final word on women only voters. Yeah. The students not stood up. Quite concerned about representation in the House of Parliament, uh, yeah. which with no proportion of women. Um, I think you're against women only quotas though. I am. Um, the reason why is because I think they are slightly tokenistic. In fact, in Oxford West and Abingdon, look, you know, we've ended up with three major parties and three women candidates, so it can happen without them. Um, and I think the way to do it, and the Liberal Democrats have done this very well, they've realised that a lot of women don't put themselves forward because they don't feel that they have the skills. Quite often, actually, they do have the skills in abundance, but they need to be 
uh, mentored and they need to be given a little bit of extra training to raise their confidence. We've done that and what we've seen is that in our target seats, in our winnable seats, nearly half of our candidates are women and we very much hope to be able to elect them. I agree it's absolutely important, but I'm not sure that positive discrimination is the way to do it. Later, Moran. Thanks very much. Thank you very much.